Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Now today's question is all about socializing and how we can get better at it if we are shy or maybe introverted. But before I jump into that, are you new to my channel? Welcome. I'm a licensed therapist talking about all things mental health and I release videos on Mondays and on Thursdays. So make sure you're subscribed and have those notifications turned on so that you don't miss out. But let's jump into today's question and it is, Katie, I'm a very shy and introverted person who has a hard time being in social situations. I want to be able to be comfortable around people and hold conversation, but I just have no idea what to say or how to act around them. I have a hard time making friends and I just feel so awkward when I'm with people. What can I do to be better at socializing? Is this something therapy could help me with? Thanks. Now, I really like this question because I honestly think that all of us have struggled with this at one point or another in our lives, even if it was just because we're at an event where we don't know anybody. And yes, there are many things that we can do to help ourselves overcome it. First, and you may have seen this coming if you've been watching me for a while, is to begin talking more kindly to yourself. I know I talk about this all the time, probably too much, but that's only because it is so important. Many of the issues we all struggle with every day are born out of our lack of confidence or self-worth. So if we work to improve that little by little, we'll feel more comfortable meeting new people and having conversations with them. Now, one of the ways to work on this is to pick three to five things you enjoy about yourself or even something amazing that you did that day and do this each and every day. Write them down, write those three to five things down, say them out loud to yourself and know that over time, you'll be able to absorb all that positivity. But it's normal for it to take time. It takes time for us to get used to this nice conversation. And another option is just to notice how often you judge or talk trash about others. Pay attention to it and then force yourself to say something nice as well. I know this sounds odd, but trust me, this alone has changed my life. This is something I try to do personally. Just forcing my mind into a more positive space where I'm talking kindly to others, even if it's just in my head, makes me feel so much better. And it stops me from judging and just being nasty to myself and others as a whole. And remember, obviously, I am no better than you at this stuff. In fact, I'm almost worse because I know when what I'm doing is only holding me back and bad for my mental health and I just do it anyways. So it just goes to show that we can all improve and work to be more positive to ourselves and others. Okay, on to the next tip to becoming better at socializing and that is to practice initiating conversation. Now, I know this sounds like a terrible idea, but if we wait for someone to come to us, we A, don't get to choose who we get to connect with, and B, we don't get to pick the topic of conversation. So if we walk up to someone first and we introduce ourselves and start a conversation, we can make sure it's about something we know a lot about or that we really enjoy talking about. You know what I mean? And this can give us a bit more control over the situation, help us feel more confident. So before you go into a new social situation, maybe come up with some topics that you would like to talk about. It could be the weather, it could be a sports game or a team you enjoy, new music you're listening to, or something you're working on in work or school. Really anything going on that you would enjoy talking about. And my next tip is to be okay with eye contact. This is where that newly found confidence will come in handy. Looking at the floor or avoiding eye contact altogether doesn't help us appear warm and welcoming. So even if someone wanted to approach us, they might look over and decide not to. Standing tall, looking around the room, and even smiling at people when you meet eyes with them for just a brief second can work wonders. That can also tell us who is open and friendly as well and help us pick the person that we want to go up to first and start a conversation. Since I know many of you struggle with eye contact, maybe practice with those that we know best, like friends, family, or even with your therapist in therapy. Slowly but surely, we can become more and more comfortable meeting someone's gaze, holding it for a few seconds. And like I said, that self-confidence that we've been working on will help a lot with this as well. Next, keep open body language. I know people have talked about this in the past, but I don't actually think we've addressed it here on the channel. But body language tells us so much about people. So just be aware of what vibes, possibly unintentionally, that you might be putting out there. An open body language really just means keeping your arms and legs uncrossed, your shoulders back, and your eyes casually moving around the room. And I know that that could just seem overwhelming, but just consider the difference you feel when I do this versus when I do this. 
It can feel much more warm, much more inviting. And so taking a chance to consider what your body language is saying to those around you can be the difference between you making a connection with someone or not. My next tip, and you think this one would be obvious, but trust me, I go out a lot and it is just not, and that is put your phone away. No one is gonna approach us if we are looking down at our phone, scrolling through Instagram or texting a friend of ours. Keep your phone in your pocket or your purse so that you look open and available. Remember, we're supposed to be like casually looking around the room. We can't do that if we're just in our phone all the time. And my final tip is to get out more. Try new things. This will not only give you more opportunities to connect with other people and try out your new tools, you know, open body language, we smile, we make eye contact, but it also gives you something to talk about with others. Like when you're at an event, remember? If it's like a sports team we like or weather, we're talking about that. But if you've been doing a lot of new things and experiencing a lot of new things, that gives you a lot to talk about. And if you're struggling to find things to do, you can go to meetup.com, that's a great resource, or even at your local library or local coffee shop. Tap into your local stores because they're usually run by people who also live in the same area. So they tend to know what's going on around town. Like for example, when Sean and I were back home visiting my family in January, we went to this new cheese shop and they had a knitting club going on in the morning. And this whole table was filled with pamphlets of different activities happening in the area and flyers about other things going on. And I know that it can seem really hard to find things to get involved in, but believe me, if we just start looking for it and keeping our eyes peeled, you'll see more and more resources available and more and more flyers and pamphlets. You'll suddenly realize we're there all along. So just keep your eyes peeled and as you practice socializing more and more, you can ask people what they do for fun or if they know of any other groups that go for hikes or you know, volunteer at the animal shelter or whatever you're interested in. And to answer the last portion of this person's question, yes, therapy can help with this. And group therapy may even be better because it gives you an opportunity to practice some of the tips in a safe therapeutic environment. And once you feel good about it in the therapeutic setting, then you can take it out into the world. So find a therapist or group that suits you and let them know that this is what you want to work on. You can even bring up some of the tips I mentioned to help you get started. Never be afraid to be clear and straightforward with your therapist. After all, we're here to help you work towards your goals. So letting us know what those are right away will save you time and money. I hope you found this helpful and interesting. Remember, if you have a question you would like me to cover in a future video, leave it in those comments down below, and I will see you next time. Bye.